Yeah, so I'm Catherine Elmer, and I am currently a professor uh, in the field of evolutionary biology and ecology at the Institute of Biodiversity, Animal Health, and Comparative Medicine at the University of Glasgow. And I have been involved with the FSBI for several years now. I'm a council member, um, and most of my involvement on committees has been through the studentships. So I have been on the studentships committee for um, several rounds, and I was the chair for a couple of years. My research is on uh, the origins of new biodiversity, especially adaptive diversity. I'm quite interested in how um, lineages evolve new major new traits or uh, new adaptive variants that are particularly tied to different environments. And so this is something that we see in fish um, repeatedly after colonizations, especially of new environments like post-glacial lakes, for example, or crater lakes. And so I do this using uh, evolutionary approaches, molecular ecology, and also examining yeah, ecological and developmental phenotypes. And our work has been looking at um, yeah, the origins of those new phenotypes and their genetic basis. And so something that I really like to use uh, as, a, as a framework for that is looking at parallel or convergent evolution. So the repeated uh, evolution of similar traits in different environments or different lineages. And so fish are a really great, um, a great model for that. And we also work on reconstructing evolutionary relationships among populations and species whether those are at very shallow scales, like looking at um, you know, very recent colonizations of lakes, for example, but also at deeper evolutionary time scales. At the moment, most of our work is on salmonid fishes. So Arctic char especially are a fantastic uh, fish to study this. They have many rapid diversifications and Scotland is one of the geographic regions where they have many populations that diverge into different, uh, what we call different ecomorphs. Uh, and we are also studying uh, corrigonids, so especially uh, European whitefish, which in Scotland we call powan, uh, and looking at uh, the origins of these populations in Scotland and the relationships um, contextualized across Europe. And also we have done some work on whitefish looking at their response to um, uh, recovery from pollution and how uh, predicting how eutrophication affected species histories and then how recovery of, of a lake um, to previous oligotrophic conditions allowed the species to recover and now even diversify. So that work was done in Constance uh, with some collaborators at the University of Constance. Hmm. My advice would be to find topics that you find really uh, interesting and exciting um, and that you want to be widely involved in. So I think that for many of us, there are a lot of um, projects that we could find equally exciting. So for example, if, if someone is searching for a PhD, I think it's, it's worthwhile to keep your ideas open and not, get, not to get too... Um, too narrow too soon. I mean, the PhD and early training is a really important time for developing a breadth of experience and a breadth of skills. Um, so, but also you do need to find a project that you find really interesting and that you want to read about and you want to talk about um, because you're going to spend, uh, even whether it's a PhD or a postdoc position, you're going to spend a considerable amount of time really delving into the topic. And so if you have something that you find exciting about fish biology, um, yeah, if it's, I mean, if it's something that can also have some, you know, relevance to society or relevance to improving the environment or relevance for medicine, then these are, of course, you know, really important aspects to consider as well. And so that can also you know, tip the scales, I think, about, about directions that people can go. But I mean, there's also, you know, a lot of different ways that, that research can unfold. So I think it's keeping broad is worthwhile. Oh, well, I'd have to say my FSBI medal. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, I absolutely would recommend FSBI membership because there's so many different ways to be involved. Um, and with the FSBI, one can be you know, very involved. There are opportunities through the symposia and through council and uh, through organizing um, events or activities or for uh, publications through the FSBI, like through the fisheries, um, sorry, the Journal of Fish Biology. Um, but also, you know, one can, can choose a, a breadth of different involvement. So it's also possible to be just sort of dipping in and dipping out. And so the society offers a lot of support, both financially, there are, um, you know, opportunities for postdocs, for students, uh, and for conferences, for example, but also for career development, especially through the symposia and through the, you know, the opportunity to, to, to discuss and share ideas with other fish biologists. So I highly recommend it. <laughs>